Hello, I'm Luke Hatfield. Alongside me is Matt Wilson. We're here at the Hawthorns. Matt, a 3-0 win for Albion, a home win in 2019. And after a turbulent week, pretty much exactly what the doctor ordered, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Um, I mean, it flattered Albion. Mm. Let's, uh, let's not beat around the bush. I thought Swansea had significantly more possession. Yep. Um, they probably created more chances. Um, Sam Johnston was in absolutely inspired form in, in the gu- in the Albion goal. Made three or four world class saves. Yeah. Uh, the one in the second half from uh, Conor Roberts was a- outstanding. Um, and obviously, Bursan Celina missed probably the most ridiculous penalty of all time. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. No. Um, so on another day, that could have been three-three or four-three to Swansea. Or, you know, Alvin could have quite easily lost that. But they did look more comfortable mm-hmm. with this, with that, with that system, which was four-five-one essentially. Um, and James Shan's decision to to bring Chris Brunt back into the team proved an inspired one because mm-hmm. he scored a free kick and he put a corner on Mason Holgate's head. Um, and you know two set piece goals less than 30% possession it's just like the old days isn't it yeah it it certainly is and although you know Swansea had their chances they did seem a bit more resolute Albion I thought they were a little bit I mean it's harsh to say they were more organised than they were under more because obviously he was organising them but they did seem a little bit tighter at the back well they just played 10 men behind the ball I mean and it was it was a different I know what you're talking about organisation because um I think they probably believed in it a bit more mm. um, and you know there was some very uh, selfless performances from Jay Rodriguez at, at left wing often doing a lot of work at, at, in defence mm-hmm. um, basically the wingers were tucking in they weren't being left up it was pragmatic rather than um, you know brave I suppose is the word to say mm-hmm. um, it was uh, you know they, they, they made it difficult for Swansea to pick to pick passes through them. Swansea did it at times. Yep. I mean, they, they played some really nice stuff, Swansea, and, and, and short, sharp passes. And particularly in the first half, album didn't always get get hold of uh, Dyer or um, mm. Routledge or Chilina in those little pockets. But after the break, it did improve. Yep. So whatever Shan said to them at half time, it worked. And let's not forget that you had Kieran Gibbs out. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought Clyde Townsend had a bit of a poor night. I thought he struggled a bit. Yeah. So you've got Gibbs to come back after the international break. That'll be a boost. Mm-hmm. Um, you had uh, Dawson was forced off with injury and then you had Holgate forced off with injury. So that's, you know, you're playing with essentially the second string back line towards the end and, and, yeah. and they stood firm. Okay. You know, they relied on Johnston a lot and Swansea did create some chances. But I think, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm loath to say that that completely justifies sacking Darren Moore. Mm. But it goes some way to explaining it. Yeah. Had they played that way, that system all season, you know, playing percentage football, the amount, the amount of second balls they won after hoofing it up the, in the air, even to Dwight Gale, who's not yeah. a big, he's not, he's not a big striker, no. but they hoofed it up to Dwight Gale and they got on the second balls and then they were away. Mm. It was, it was just percentage football, and Alvin have got the players to play that system. Um, and you know when you've got someone like Dwight Gale in your team and someone with Joe Rodriguez's work rate willing to play at left left wing, it just it does sort of lay bare that the the tactical mistakes that Darren Moore was making. Yeah. Look, as I said earlier, on another night they could have they could have lost that game, um, but I still think they looked more comfortable in that system. Certainly do. And Sam Johnson, as you touched on, some fantastic saves today. Is this the goalkeeper now, which I think a lot of Albion fans thought they were getting at the start of the season? Because I mean, today he was he was like a brick wall in that goal. He's always been a good shot stopper, though. The, the the I think the issue has been this season. Sometimes he's been a bit vulnerable to the high ball, yeah. um, and his distribution hasn't always been spot on. But you know, he's been asked to do that mm. um, today. When he, you know, there was a one point where he hoofed it, and he got a round of applause from the home fans. Yeah. Um, and you know, I th- I j- obviously he was fantastic. He, you know, he was in. It was, it was one of those days when the keeper was was brilliant. Yeah. Um, but I think he's also perhaps doesn't feel the pressure of having to play out from the back, mm-hmm. and that calms him down a little bit. He knows he can. He can if he needs to. He can just hoof it. And yeah actually that enables him to relax and, and pull off those great saves mm-hmm. you know same for Hagazi and Dawson who are much better today obviously yeah. Dawson's forced off but they were much better today um, as I said earlier I thought Townsend had a bit of a bit of a tricky night he made a couple of errors that, that on another day would have led to goals mm-hmm. um, but Holgate and, and Mears did okay at right back 
Um, and, you know, Chris Brunt is the other contender for Man of the Match. I think Johnston probably edges it, but Brunt was brilliant at the base of midfield. Yeah. Uh, marshalled every, everyone, you know, kept Harper in check alongside him, told him what to do, which I thought was fantastic. You, know, you could see him leading. Yeah. It was brilliant, because that's what Harper sometimes lacks, there's that off the ball work. Mm. But Brunton, he also got the ball, picking up the second bits and pieces, and obviously he scores the goal and then puts the corner on. You know, We know he's got that quality from yeah. set pieces. Um, good to see him back in action. Um, and you know, even Gale, I suppose, although he didn't get his goal, um, he was... He was always a nuisance, and you know, on another night he might have had a penalty, although it did look a bit soft, and I don't think he's going to get many of those until the end of the season. No, um, and speaking to the fans, a lot of shock still kind of around the fan base in terms of the, the Darren Moore decision. I mean, the big question is who's going to replace him and when's it going to happen? Because originally we thought it could the new boss could be in place for this game today. Obviously, that's not been the case. Brentford Saturday, will he be there for that one? That's a big question now. Yeah, well, um, James Shan doesn't know if he's going to be taking charge of Brentford, but at the moment we understand that is that is probably the most likely outcome. Mm -hmm. I think you've got the international break coming up. Yeah, they did okay today. Look, Brentford's going to be really tricky because they've just won seven on a bounce at home. They're yeah. flying at Griffin Park. Um, they'll be a lot more difficult than Swansea tonight, I think. Um, but. You know that is, that sort of performance, that back to basics performance, is, is something to build confidence from. It's like the first step on the run uh, of the lads to, to get some confidence up, um, and scoring three goals obviously helps. Um, whether there'll be a, a new boss by Saturday, we're not sure, but I would be surprised if it was by Saturday. Um, you Do you know, think a performance like that buys them time? I think it does buy a little bit of breathing space. Um, you know, obviously they were interested in Jukanovic at the start of the week. Mm. Those talks have broken down for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I think there's a number of other candidates that they're interested in. Um, David Wagner mm. is another person they've approached, but he he can't he can't due to the due to the things of his, co his Huddersfield contract and the fact that it would cost a, a massive load of compensation. He's mm. not available until the summer. And uh, Alex Neal from Preston is another person that they're interested in. But he is obviously at Preston at the moment, so there mm. are complications there. So it might be there might be a situation where we have James Shan for the Brentford game, yeah. and then they see if they see what they can do. Can they entice Alex Neal out, out, of, out of Preston? Can they get somebody else in until the end of the season to yeah. work with Jimmy Shan? You know, someone like Michael Appleton, or, or you know, someone who can just oversee the next ten games see if they can get them up and then you go and get your man in the summer or do they think actually we're going to push the button on your Kanovic, stump up the cash and, and, and get him now the thing about your Kanovic, I think is that you know he costs he he, he the way that he works mm -hmm. based on what happened at Fulham is it takes a bit of time yeah to get him um, to get his teams up to speed is he the is he the immediate impact guy that you want I, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah. the, the, this is what the, the board have to have to decide. Um, I think there is some consternation amongst the fan base that a lot of people thought that once Darren Moore was sacked, there would be someone coming in soon. Yeah. Because why would you sack a manager with ten games to go if you haven't got one lined up? And I and I share those those sentiments. Um, but the good news is, I suppose that they won tonight, and if they can get a result at, at Brentford, then they've got through the period. And then they can make an appointment in the international break. Um, but look, as 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 Jimmy Shan himself said, just their football go sometimes moves really quickly. Yeah. So don't don't rule anything out. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did um, have a have a man in place for Brentford. But at the moment, I think the most likely situation is that is Jimmy Shan uh, as caretaker. Yeah. So a good result here at the Hawthorns and one which might just buy West Brom's board a little bit of time in a point in there. But for all the latest on Albion's managerial home, make sure you stay with us at Express and Star. Come